right, so let's have a look at um, some geometry. Um, I'd just like to share this with you. It is a past paper question. All right, we'd first look at all the instructions, make sure that everything is filled in on the sketch. All right, so in the diagram points A, B, D, and C lie on a circle. They did not need to tell you that they lie on the circle. You can see that they do. Um, they tell you that CE, CE is parallel to AB. They have indicated that. Always check. With E on AD produced, so AD produced, E, chord CB and AD intersected F. And then they said that angle D2 is 50 and angle C1 is 15. All right. So that is all the information that they've given you. Oh, sorry. Um, I just want to move this down so that we can answer the questions properly. Oh, I keep pushing the wrong thing. <clears throat> all right. All right, so that we can see the questions, that would help. All right, so I've just chopped off the top a little bit so that we can see all the questions. All right, so before we even look at the questions that they're asking, let's see what we can fill in. Okay, so first of all, um, we can see a butterfly there or a bow tie. Okay, do you see that? I'm tracing it with my pen. All right, so that means that these two are equal, right? Angles in the same segment. And we, know, we don't know what these two are, maybe call them X, but they are equal to each other as well. All right. Um, and there are parallel lines. So if we go from the one parallel and draw a Z, then this is actually 50, this whole angle see that so that is 50 and 50 minus 15 is 35 which means that that is also 35 so i can actually just get rid of the x all right let's have a look and see what else we can do um there's another z okay so if that's 35 that is 35 and that makes sense because in this triangle if I extend ED, there's an exterior, and the exterior angle of the triangle equals the sum of the opposite interiors. Okay, so there was more than one way to get that. And obviously, then we can work out those angles, angles in the triangle. Okay, 35 and 50 is 85. 180 minus 85 is 95. And that, that's vertically opposite, or angles in a triangle. All right, so... Angle A is 35. How did we get angle A? All right. It was alternate to that. And how did we get that? The exterior equals the sum of the opposite interiors. That would be one way. All right. Okay. So you would have to state that angle E equals 35. And the reason would be exterior angle equals sum of opposite interiors. Then you would say that angle A equals angle Angle E equals angle A. Alternate angles. Why? Because CE is parallel to AB. And then angle C2, angles in the same segment. Right. And then they say prove with a reason that CF, CF, that this is a tangent to the circle passing through CD and E. So in other words, and I'm going to highlight this. So in other words, CF, this line, is a tangent to the circle passing through C, D, and E. Okay, so in other words, there's, there is a circle around so that D, E, and C are on it. And C, F. You want to prove that it is a tangent. Now, the, the, the theorems with a tangent, the one that comes to mind is a tan chord theorem. All right, tan chord theorem. 
says that this angle between the tangent and the chord equals the angle subtended by the chord. So those two are in fact equal to each other. They are both 35. So you will say angle C2 equals angle E. Proven, you've already proved it there. Therefore, CF is a tangent and the reason converse of the tan chord here. All right, so that's the one question. Just going to clear and move that down. All right, let's have a look at question nine. Let's read the instructions first and then I'll move it down. Okay, in the triangle ABC, ABC and ACD are drawn. ABC and ACD are drawn. F and G are points on side AB and AC such that AF is 3X and FB is 2X. They have filled it in. AG is 12Y and GC is 8Y. H, E and K are points on side AE, on, sorry, sorry, on side AD such that GH is parallel to CK and GE is parallel to CD. Okay. Now, when you look at this, you're immediately thinking of proportion, right? Because we have lots of parallel lines going on here, right? Right, so the first one, the first, I'm actually first going to move this up. Now we've got all the information there. All right, so now they want you to prove that FG if G is parallel to BC. Now, what would make FG parallel to BC? If the sides were in proportion, right? So that to that equals that to that, if the ratios were the same. So if I work out 3X over 2X, does it equal 12Y over 8Y? That is what I'm trying to establish. Because if that over that equals that over that, then those two are parallel. Right, the x's cancel and I get 3 over 2. The y's cancel. And what can go into 8 and 12? 4. 4 goes into 8 twice and into 12 three times. So yes, I do get that 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2. So therefore, the ratios are the same. And therefore, that is parallel to that. All right, and then if we look at the next one, okay, so we already know that. Now, if, if before I look at the next question, just take careful note of those parallels. I'm actually going to draw them in a different color. So those parallels, the green ones, that means that this triangle and that triangle are similar. Why? Because I have corresponding angles equal and a common angle in the small triangle and the big triangle. Okay, so remember if that is 12 over 8, then this will also be 12 over 8. So say 12a over 8. In other words, it's also 3 to 2. Okay, so this will also be 3p to 2p, in other words. And that's that piece. And that's that whole one. All right. Um, they asked you to prove, first of all, that those are, those are parallel. Then they said prove that AH to HK, AH to HK equals AE to ED. Right. Okay. So let's look at the other set of parallels. Okay. We have those parallels. I'm going to put them in a different color. So that parallel with that parallel means you have a small triangle and a big triangle. Small, big. All right. And again, those are parallel. So these two triangles are similar, the small and the big, which means the ratios are the same. So in other words, that to that, okay, the line ends there. So that AE 
to ED, there it is, is also 3 to 2. So that is also like 3K to 2K. 3 to 2, and this was also 3 to 2. So yes, they are both equal to 3 over 2. So you would have to state that AH to HK equals 3 to 2. Why? Because of um, um, proportion and or similarity. And AE to ED would be the same. Also proportion or similarity. And therefore they are equal to each other. Right, now if it is further given that AH equals 15, AH is 15, so this is 15, and ED equals 12. So this piece equals 12. Right across here, that. And only up to H is 15. They want you to calculate the length of EK, this little piece here. All right, so we know that AH, AH to HK is 3 to 2. AH to HK, remember that, is 3 over 2. So therefore, if AH is 15, we can quite then happily work out HK. Right, so 3HK is equal to 2 times 15, which is 30. And then if I divide by 3, I get HK equals 10. Okay, so that whole piece is 10. Okay, so from there to there is 10. And bearing in mind, we want EK, right? And, okay, so H k is 10 and then we also know that um, a e to e d is the same thing right a e to e d is also 3 to 2 how can we possibly use all this information so that we can work with what they're giving us in order to end up with our e k right which is this little piece here just want to use a different color Okay, so it's the difference here. How, how could you work out that little difference? Because we also have that part in the same ratio, but a different length. So all the way from A to K is 25. And we only want this little piece here, the little piece EK. Um, and they told me that ED is 12. I must just be very clear. E, from E, 2D is 12. So there's a little bit of an overlap there. So if I could possibly work out KD maybe, or HD, can I work out HD? This whole length, mm, not really, only that piece which I've worked out. And then what about the other triangle? So this one, I'm sure I can work that out. But it's not got to do with that one, right? That's a 15. So what other triangles do I have that are similar? I've got that one and this one. So I've got that piece over that piece, which I've established is 10. So from H to K is 10. Now, if I work in the big triangle and this one where the purple lines are going, is there any way that I could work with that piece? Possibly. Bearing in mind that this is also going to be 3 to 2, not so. 
So isn't that also going to be, so AE, I think that's E, AE to ED, wouldn't that also be um, 3 to 2 as well? Because that's the same as that, right? There it is. 3, 3 to 2. It's a bit messy here, hey? Okay, so 3 to 2. And I'm trying that. So this whole piece here, how on earth am I going to find that little piece? So what other parallels do I have? Look at all the possibilities. Possibly think of using maybe a little unknown there, right? Because if that's X, say, no, let me not use X because that's X. Um, let me call that M. So if that's M, then that to that is also 3 to 2, that to that. But I don't know what that little piece is, right? So if I called it um, 15 plus M, maybe. So 15 plus M, that over that, over ED, is equal to 3 over 2. And didn't we know that ED is 12? So 15 plus M over 12 equals 3 over 2. And then I can solve. LCD is 12. So 15 plus M equals times 6. So M will equal 18 minus 15, which is 3. So in other words, that little piece is 3, and this whole piece was 10, and 10 minus 3 will give me 7. Right, so I needed to create a little unknown there so that I could use 3 over 2. All right, very difficult to see these two triangles, the pink ones and then the green ones with those parallels as opposed to the pink ones. Okay, and then it's all about working with those ratios. Not easy, is it? Okay, it's quite tricky. All right, let's have a look at another one. Again, let's just read the instructions first. Um, so in the diagram, W is a point on the circle with center O. Okay, that's the center. So remember, the first thing you fill in when you have a center is your radii. Okay, now I would be inclined to just put a line, but there's already a one liner there. And plus, this radius is split by this line. So let's rather do this. Okay, so therefore radius, radius, but that doesn't form a, an, an isosceles triangle. Neither does this one, but that one does. All right, so we already know then that those two angles are equal in case we needed them. They have also said that um, MV equals VN. So what do we know about a line from the center to the midpoint of a chord, because that's the midpoint, right? If that equals that, that's the midpoint. So it must be perpendicular. The tangent at W, right? So there's a tangent. So now we're starting to think of all the theorems with tangents. The angle between a tangent and a radius is 90. Right, and if these are 90, are they not corresponding angles? There's the F. Okay, so those two are corresponding, which means that these two lines must be parallel. And when you have parallel lines, you're thinking of alternate angles, corresponding angles, blah, blah, blah. So everything else that you could possibly think of, think of would be equal. If that's 
x, that's x. If that's x, that's x, for example. I should have filled this in only after I've moved it up. That was silly of me. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that because look at this. Okay, I'm going to redo that. Right, let's just quickly fill that in again. Radius 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 that equals that a line from the center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord the angle between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees which makes these two lines parallel which makes those corresponding and those corresponding and of course these two triangles would be congruent so that angle would equal that angle etc etc okay Right, it says give a reason why OV is perpendicular to MN. So that is the angle between the radius, sorry, a line from the center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. Prove that MN is parallel to TS. Well, we did that, right? How did we do it? We showed that that was 90 and that was 90 and they formed corresponding angles, which made those two lines parallel. All right, and then you must show that TMNS, TMNS, okay, this big quad, you must prove that it is a cyclic quad. All right, it's already proven we can see that the exterior angle of the cyclic quad, if you extend that side, x is the exterior, it equals the opposite interior. So it is definitely cyclic. Same here, exterior equals opposite interior. Why? How did we get that? We had to state that these two were equal because of our isosceles triangles, because of the radii. Then we had to state that because of the parallels, those two are corresponding and those two are corresponding and therefore exterior equals opposite interior making that a cyclic quad all right and then the hard part comes i'm going to change color here all right they want you to prove that os os the whole thing MN, which is this whole side, equals 2ON, which is that side, WS. Right, so now there's quite a lot going on here, sort of. Okay, so. We would like to use the whole side and that side. And we want to use this. So if we looked at OWS, there is a parallel line going across, which means we're sitting with ratios again, or proportion. So in other words, this triangle is similar to that triangle, which means there's proportion. We want to use OS, the big one, and we want to use ON. So small over big, small ON over big OS equals, so small over big equals small VN over big WS. Now, there's my OS and there is my ON. And there's my WS. The only problem is the VN. Now, if I look at the sketch, VN, is VN not equal to a half of MN? So, ON over OS, in fact, I'm going to, no, ON over OS equals, VN is a half 
Vn is a half of Mn. Why would I do that? Because there's an Mn there. There's no Vn, but there is an Mn, which is double it. Um, yeah, over Ws. And then if I go On Ws equal to a half MnOs, and then I multiply the two up, I get two on ws equals mnos, which is exactly what I needed to prove. Right, so it was important to indicate on your sketch which sides you're talking about, because that gives you an indication of where you're working. Certainly there were lots of ticks going on around here, right? Big small, you should have immediately picked up parallels. In fact, even before we proved that, when we showed that these two are parallel, we should have been going, hmm, then I can use similarity. Are they in the big and the small? Or this small and big? Or that small and big? Right. Okay. All right, so I hope that helped. And um, I hope that gives you an idea of how to tackle these types of problems. They can be quite tricky. This one was okay. Um, that two was also, when you see that two, you're already looking at your sketch and thinking, where are two sides equal to each other? And there were two sides equal to each other. So that's a clue already that you're somehow relating either that with the big or that with the big, because that is half of that. Okay. All right, super. Um, great. I'm going to stop there. That's it. And um, yeah, go through this again, practice it, make sure you really, really understand it. Okay. Super. Thank you so much. And um, good luck. Work hard. Bye.